Okay, hi there, welcome to a, an economics key application context video. So one area that examiners are keen to stress ahead of students taking their papers is for them to showcase their knowledge of the subject and add contextual application to their answers. Well, hopefully this series of short update videos will help in this. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about the key areas, the key data on monetary policy interest rates. So in some countries, interest rates are very high. Speaking in the spring of 2022, I've picked out two countries for you. In Argentina, monetary policy interest rates were 47%, 47% in April 2022. And in Turkey, interest rates were 14%. Oh, a third country in Brazil, 12%. So there you have three good examples to add to your revision notes of countries where, uh, where interest rates, monetary policy interest rates were well above 10%. Adding these to your revision notes, by the way, is a great way to add context in exams. Now, typically, uh, monetary policy interest rates are set by central banks, uh, but uh, and some central banks are wholly independent of government and they can set their own interest rates, whereas in other countries, the government often can and does seek to influence and direct where they want interest rates to move. And a really good example at the moment of this is President Erdogan in Turkey, who is uh, encouraging the central bank, or essentially forcing the central bank, to cut interest rates in Turkey despite very high inflation. This goes slightly counterintuitive to the normal conventional macro policy. I think we have a good video on Turkey and inflation on our YouTube channel. Typically, uh, when we think about high interest rate countries, Argentina, Brazil, Turkey, etc., uh, high interest rates are associated with nations where there's a persistently high rate of inflation. So inflation in Argentina is uh, 55% and it's 60% in Turkey, the annual increase in consumer prices. Now, central banks typically use tighter or deflationary monetary policy in a bid to try to control or limit demand pull and cost push inflationary pressures. And one of the ways to do this is to use high interest rates to stabilise the external value of their currency, their exchange rate. In contrast, so thinking about high interest rate countries, Argentina, Turkey, Brazil, in contrast, there are some countries where interest rates are remarkably low. Indeed, Worth, I think, adding to your notes, in Japan, monetary policy interest rates set by the Bank of Japan are negative, minus 0.1%, and so too in Switzerland. The Swiss central bank has policy rates of minus 0.75%. And the 19 countries in the Eurozone, including Germany and Finland and, uh, and uh, Cyprus and Malta, uh, France and Holland, interest rates are zero. Nominal, uh, nominal interest rates in the European Union are zero. Now, Japan uh, adopted negative interest rates in 2016, largely in an effort to combat decades of deflation. They're trying to encourage consumers and businesses to borrow and spend, to, to drive up aggregate demand to get the price level rising. Switzerland has also moved to negative interest rates, uh, partly because they've been very close to deflation which has been caused in part by having a very, very strong appreciating exchange rate. So for them, negative interest rates are a way of trying to stem the inflow of, of hot money, to, which is driving their currency ever higher. In the UK, here's the picture just to update you all ahead of the exams. Policy interest rates have, of course, uh, been below 1% since, uh, well, since 2009, really. Uh, they said very low levels, 2012, 0.5% for uh, four years. They were going up in 2019, they'd reached 0.75%. But then, of course, the pandemic hit and the central bank, the Bank of England, cut interest rates to 0.1%. And they stayed there during the pandemic. But in recent months, obviously, with the increase in inflation, um, uh, inflation is likely to average 7% in 2022, the central bank has started to raise interest rates they're currently 0.75%, but likely to go higher. So in terms of evaluation, uh, lots of questions they can ask. To what extent do high interest rates help to control inflation? Well, in theory, they should. But what other macroeconomic effects might they have in the medium term? What are the roles that fiscal and supply side policies can make as alternative policies to control inflation? And what about negative interest rates? Do they necessarily work to stimulate consumer borrowing, consumer demand, and business investment. Uh, the, the evidence from Japan is mixed at best. How else might deflation be avoided? Again, to what extent might fiscal policy be used as a strategy for avoiding
deflation. Either way, hopefully this has given you some good exam context on monetary policy interest rates. Stay safe, stay curious, stay happy. See you sometime soon.